It can be hard not to be completely obsessed with finding Mr. Right. As a married woman, I look back on that time in my life and I think, did I think about anything else? I hope you're not looking for Mr. Perfect. The guy that God has for you will be perfect for you, but not perfect. And he won't expect you to be either. But we're constantly bombarded with love songs and chick flicks and ideas all throughout history of what love is and what your love story should look like. I don't know about you, but I know for a lot of women, you'll pop on a chick flick and then after it's over, you kind of look at your friends and go, well, I feel worthless. And then you grab a box of Little Debbies and you throw on another one to make yourself feel better, right? So we have all these, we're constantly bombarded with all of these images of what is right and what our expectations should be for Mr. Right. But then we stop and we say, oh my gosh, here comes the guy, this is it. And what, what, do we, what do we women do? Well, of course, first we mentally stalk him. We do what I call the Christmas card test where you take his last name and your first name and put them together and make sure it sounds all right and then take all the baby names of you've ever dreamt up and make sure that they sound okay with his last name. And you dream up your first date and you give him you know, three options of how you want pro your proposal to go. And then you move to Facebook stalking. And you get on Facebook and you look at 1,245 pictures of him and his Uncle Bill on their fishing trip. And you see him with his arm around another girl and you're like, oh, that better be his sister. And then you go from Facebook stalking to texting. And then you start calling him. And then you start flirting with him. And eventually you start physically stalking him or getting physical. And all of those Facebook and texting are all fine, but there can be some, pot some very potential traps. Think about it. It can be very addictive. It's sometimes pretty private. And especially when it gets to the whole idea of being physical, sometimes you'll wrap yourself up into things for the wrong reasons, or you start going places just because he's there. I call this mental stalking, Facebook stalking, texting, calling, you know, all of this is what I have deemed the emotocoaster. Why do I call it the emotocoaster? Well, it's a little bit like a roller coaster. You're waiting in line for four hours, you think it's gonna be the greatest thing in the world, and you jump on the roller coaster, and it throws you upside down, and gives you whiplash, and then it comes to a complete stop, and you get out and throw up in front of everyone. It's the emotocoaster. Unfortunately, there's a lot of relationships that look like that. But women use the emotocoaster to fill insecurities all the time. We don't wanna be alone, we have this pressure that we have to have a man in our life, and you have to be dating. It's been said, of course, that men will use love to get sex, and then women will use sex to get love. But the problem is that the word is actually not love, but use. John Paul II says that a person should never be used as a means to an end. You cannot use someone for your own pleasure, whether it be emotional or physical. And the desire to love is a part of all of us, and no one intends to use others. It just happens. Think about a time in your life where you used someone and you knew it. Think about a time in your life where you were used and you knew it. Think about a time where you had to watch your best friend be used and you knew it. Or think about a time that you watched your best friend use someone and you knew it. We are all broken. We all have wounds. We all have stories. The heaviness of those four questions can bring up hours of conversation about the wounds that we have. But the answer lies in love. Love says, I desire your good, not for my sake, but for yours. It's not selfishness, but selflessness. Love is, is the conqueror of use. And we have to be aware of what we allow to penetrate our hearts and our minds. And we have to know what spins us onto the emotocoaster. And we have to make the decision to never use someone and to never allow ourselves to be used. Human hearts are fragile and we have to work hard to protect them. Let's break the cycle of use and inspire authentic love.